special edition here on BA TV as we take a look at 2012 in review. We look towards 2013 and then of course we've got some exciting times in 2014 with another edition of the Commonwealth Games, this time in Glasgow. It is a rare occurrence for us to be able to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with our national coach Steve Glasson and the man who took our Australian Jackaroos to victory on five occasions at the World Championships in Adelaide in November. And Steve joins us for a little quick chat about 2012 in review. And looking forward, Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Andrew. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the chat. It's, uh, it's probably a great place to start for you, isn't it, 2012, uh, with the, uh, the great results that we achieved from a high performance uh, point of view in Adelaide. Five gold, two silver from eight disciplines at the World Champs. Mate, it was a, uh, it was a fantastic result, really. We've, uh, we worked very hard for you know, over 18 months to set up for it. Um, I think if you went into the event, um, you know, estimating that you might get five gold, two silvers, um, you might be getting a little bit carried away with yourself, I'm not sure, but you know, ultimately we went there to win eight events and to walk away with five gold and two silver is a mighty event. And I think from uh, what all the experts tell me, it's a, it's a history-making result. So uh, um, a massive team effort overall. We'll cover off individuals shortly, but from your point of view, your playing CV is, is one that uh, is revered throughout the world of bowls. Uh, where does an achievement like this as a coach sort of rate in terms of uh, your lifetime career achievements? I actually think I got a more of a high out of this. Um, I was fortunate enough to be sort of world champion there um, oh, a number of years ago um, and to stand on the dais and sing the national anthem, it's a, it's a great thrill in your chosen sport. But I think to see the elation and um, the relief and the um, just the, the overall buzz that the players got out of actually securing these overall world titles and of course you know their own individual gold. Um, well, I think my comment was a few times that uh, the sunburn cream was in my eye. So, um, you know, it, it was quite an emotional time. A lot of hard work we got into it, and um, and I think it's also a, a, a moment of great appreciation for everything that uh, everybody's put into the program. The players, of course, with their wonderful talent and their commitment to the program, but also, you know, fellow staff members and the uh, and the um, I think the support of you know spectators and and Bowls Australia and and the Bowls population in general. So it was uh, you know a pretty humbling moment as well. You are a national coach and I suppose the director of high performance um, at Bowls Australia. Uh, you're also a mentor, friend, confidant to all these guys who you work so closely with at the national level, the uh, you know the 10 jackaroos on this occasion. Um, great great self-satisfaction I suppose for you to to work with um, you know good friends and long time playing mates and colleagues like Karen Murphy and Leif Selby who uh, who took the uh, the singles honours. They're a wonderful mob, the whole, um, well the whole squad's a wonderful mob and, and to get it down, if I can just backtrack a little bit, but you know to get it down to that, that final ten was um, extremely difficult no doubt and I think there's got to be accolades also given to those that narrowly missed out on selection for sure because you know they pushed our team very hard to get there. Um, you know once that process was achieved uh, it was then on to the you know the big stuff with the World Bowls and and look, it was um, it was a big thrill, you know. As you say, I've been very fortunate to be, you know, um, very close to a lot of these players, and um, you know, we have some amazing conversations at times. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we have our stern moments, we have our laughs, we have our tears, uh, the whole lot. So, you know, for the outcome to be as it was, um, you know, I, I take my hat off to everybody involved, and it, it, and it really is quite an emotional time. I speak of an elusive gold for some of them, uh, and I speak of probably Karen Murphy in the singles, but there was maybe a, I don't want to say a premature gold, but a lot of youngsters in this side who, who won World Championship gold at, uh, at the tender ages of 21. We speak of Kelsey Cottrell and, and uh, Tash Van Eldick and of course Beck at, uh, at 24. So the younger guys got a taste of it very early, didn't they? They did, and uh, when you say young, it's uh, amazing. You know, you talk of, let's use Kelsey as an example. You know, Kelsey Cottrell, a household name, been around for uh, many years now, playing for Australia, just the raw age of, you know, 21, 22. And uh, while she's certainly young in age, she's, she's not young in experience. Um, but tremendous to see, you know, again, the, the jubilation on her face and the relief. Um, and that goes to stand for, for all of them, really. So, again, a, a very big thrill. Leif Selby retires for the second time uh, from yeah. the Australian team. Yeah. Uh, do we coax him out of retirement a second time? Oh, you can never say never. You know, <laughs> look, um, uh, again, you know, he's been a, a fantastic contributor to bowls in Australia, uh, a wonderful champion. Um, and he will go down as one of the, the legends of the game with his record. So, um, you know, he's got some, some personal interests, um, primarily family, that he wants to spend some time with, and, and one can only really congratulate him for that. Um, 
obviously it was a delight to get him back out of his sabbatical uh, when he did retire after India in 2010, but um, I, I think talking to him, it's unlikely we'll see him back. Um, but look, it's a funny world, isn't it? You just never know, um, never say never, but um, you know, ultimately, I suppose he's getting to that age too where you, know, you do get other interests in life. Um, and now we've got the hard task of, of trying to find if replacement is the right word, I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, you know, someone to take his place and, and that's going to be a task in itself. For those interested on that, it's probably a strange one um, in its purest sense, but our national team, I suppose you'd love to see that change over and, 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 and rotate th through its personnel regularly, which means the system's, the system's working. Well, it does. I mean, it's got to be competitive, and, and that's one of the hardest things, and that's, I suppose, as a selector as well, that's what gives us sleepless nights, but it's a wonderful situation to be in at the same time, Andrew, where it is highly competitive, and, and you really do have uh, a lot of grief in picking these sides. You know, it's highly competitive. Uh, I, I often say, and I think, you know, I put Kelvin and myself in the same boat, Kelvin Kirko, that uh, I think it was a lot easier on us when we went through because I don't believe it was as competitive. There wasn't probably as much depth uh, then as there is now, particularly in the younger brigade. So, um, you know, as I say, it's, uh, it's hard work, but, um, you know, we're blessed to have uh, a very good player roster to work with. I know, as disappointing as it was for you to uh, just turn the page in 2012 and almost put it behind you towards 2013 and indeed 14. Uh, what lies ahead? But early on in the year, we know we've got the Australian Open coming up in February and then a, uh, a pretty huge Trans-Tasman event uh, in Auckland in March. Yes. What does the rest of the year uh, entail for uh, for your area looking towards Glasgow in 2014? Yeah, well, I mean, World Bowls is great and, uh, and I think we're still sort of, uh, you know, having a bit of a, a honeymoon with that, I suppose, or a bit of a hangover with that. But um, ultimately, we've got a, a lot of planning to do now. We're, we're straight into plans for Glasgow in 2014. Uh, that's our next major benchmark event, the Commonwealth Games there. Um, and it's a, it's a total change in direction because we've gone from, you know, slick, smooth Adelaide greens to what could be, um, you know, I won't say backyard greens, but certainly greens that aren't uh, favourable to us historically. Um, and it's going to put us out of our comfort zone. So it's going to be a great challenge. And, and um, you know, we've got to work very hard here uh, to get the right people in place in order to deliver the results up there. So um, as you say, Trans-Tasman coming up, it's a, it's it's a 30 player tour heading over there with 10 in the main squad, uh, 10 in development squad and 10 juniors heading over there. Um, so that'll be a great test case for us as well. Um, and I think ultimately after World Bowls, you know, we're going to have a big target on our back. Um, you know, to mean it uh, quite humbly, but you know, we sort of set a bit of a target there. And I'm sure, you know, the powerhouse nations throughout the world, as well as uh, those wonderful countries that are coming through the ranks and really improving, um, Australia will be one that they'll want to hit hard and, and hit, you know, very well, very hard in Glasgow. So um, there's no time for complacency. It's uh, it's hard work. Australia didn't have the World Championships all in their own terms. They were challenged a lot and um, dug deep within to. Yes. to you know, to pull out the results they did and uh, the rest of the world were a formidable opponent and they're going to be the same in 2014. Oh, absolutely. I think Scotland, you know, the results were a standout. Um, New Zealand were very competitive and, and I don't want to not mention anyone because we, we had some seriously hard challenges throughout and uh, that, that's one of the wonderful things about international bowls. Um, if it was easy, everybody would be there. So, um, you know, I again pay a tribute to the team for hanging in there so tough and and doing the hard yards, but you know Scotland, for example, that were probably you know overall second place at the Worlds. They've come out here from their slow greens and adapted very well. Took away three gold medals. Um, you know they're going to be on their home track in Glasgow. They're going to be very, very formidable. Um, they've got a star-studded lineup, uh, so that's going to be one of our great challenges. But you know we're quite sort of uh, we're not oblivious to the fact that you know all nations are going to challenge. The sport's going through a, a, a transition phase, if you like, with uh, the, the introduction of um, or the, the incrementally popular um, element of barefoot bowls and social bowls and people experimenting with the game and getting involved at, at such a, a, a young and family and, 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 and fun element of the game. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your view on, I suppose, the strength of the sport, particularly around Australia? You are in close contact with a lot of people interstate and juniors coming through. Um, numbers are, are strong, in your view? Um, look, they are. I think um, I think it's generally well known that our our official numbers are, are not quite what they used to be. Um, and there's a lot of work in progress with our community development officers um, and, uh, and throughout the states and throughout the national body to to increase that and help the clubs uh, recruit and continue to blossom as far as their you know even their financial side of things go. So that's very positive and that's a, a new inception of the sport as well. But uh, certainly on the uh, on the social arena, um, barefoot bowls is getting more and more popular, there's no doubt about it. 
Um, I think, you know, the, the, the reports you get back from clubs are astronomical as far as the social occasions they're having. Um, you know, the Bucks parties, the, the staff parties, the whatever it may be party. And, um, and I think the feedback that you get is from all those participants that are new to bowls is, hey, what a great sport. And, you know, I wish I had a dollar for every time someone said to me, I wish I had a try that game 20 years ago. It's fantastic. And I encourage anyone, if you're, if you're a knocker or you're not sure about the game, for goodness sake, get out there and try because you'll, you'll have a good time. And the downside is at some stage, if you uh, are good enough to make the elite level, you might spend some time with your good self. Yeah, that is the downside. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. So, um, but look, um, you know, we're, we're highly focused on, on the sort of elite side of things, um, but we don't lose sight of the grassroots players and, and what's required at club level. And, and we need the club to be, uh, or, or the sport rather, to be, you know, going excessively well at club level. So um, we want to support that as much as we can as well. But it really is, it's a great sport. Congratulations on your achievements throughout 2012 with the World Championship side and to all of your support crew and staff and coaches and uh, National Training Centre coaches and everyone that was involved in the high performance area. Well done, a great achievement and uh, thanks for your time, you've been very generous.